We are in Backup Exec 15. I'm going to show you how to create a simplified disaster recovery disk so you can easily recover from any kind of an outage in Backup Exec. So we're going to highlight the uh, server that we want and we're going to click on the drop down arrow on the upper left hand side and then we're going to click on configuration and settings and create disaster recovery disk. Go ahead and click yes if you get a pop-up prompt. It's going to be safe, so don't worry about that. Uh, you can either continue on with the server that we've selected, or we can check the box to go to a different server. But we're going to go with the local server. All right, so we're going to create a new uh, simplified disaster recovery disk image. And if you already have one previously, you can update that. Let's go ahead and click next. And now we're going to check this box that we understand we're going to go ahead and install the uh, ADK, which is a development kit from Microsoft. So it requires that in order to create the disk, which takes a little bit of time to install, but of course we'll fast forward so you don't have to wait for it all. So uh, once you click next, we see this new toolbox show up and the installation of the ADK will continue. All right, so now we've got the option of changing the default path, but we're just going to keep that right where it is. And we're going to see it doesn't use very much uh, space here. So, um, well, actually, it uses uh, about three gigs, but uh, we've got more than three available. So let's go ahead and click Next. All right, if you want to join the Customer Experience Improvement Program, go ahead and click Yes. Otherwise, click No. Uh, you want to check out the license agreement. You know, basically, you give away your firstborn and everything else. Go ahead and click Accept. All right, so uh, here's the features area, and you're going to have to, to choose which ones that you want. By default, you've got the deployment tools, the Windows pre-installation environment. Um, you can use uh, you know, various other things such as application compatibility. It gives you a little description of what all that means. Uh, Windows Performance Toolkit, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm just going to go with what is required. Again, this is just for the ADK. This is not the part uh, for the, on the semantic side. So let's go ahead and click install. This is going to take a little while, so we'll just go ahead and fast forward. All right, looks like it's finally done. So we'll go ahead and click close. And now we have our disaster recovery disk wizard that's popping up. And it's prompting us 64-32-bit. Uh, or 32 -bit. The uh, time, we're in Pacific time, so that's fine. And of course, English. Go ahead and click Next. And it's the name of our server, so let's go ahead and check that. And Next. And now if we have any special drivers we want to include, such as RAID drivers or anything like that, we could add them here. Click Next. All right, so now... Uh, we have the volume label, which the default is fine, and then the ISO file where it's going to be created. And uh, once again, you know, we can leave the default or we can change it. I'm running a little low on space, so I'm going to switch it over uh, to the E drive where I know I have more space. So let's go ahead and click Next. That gave me an error on the path, so I went and fixed that. And now we're going to go ahead and click Create Image. So this could take uh, anywhere from a few minutes to much longer, depending on uh, the type of operating system, as well as how fast your computer might be. So uh, we'll just go ahead and let that run until it's done. Well, that took about 20 minutes, and now it says we can go ahead and click Next. And we'll go ahead and choose Finish. It shows the uh, location of the file, so we can easily find it. So I went ahead and opened that file up, and you can see there it is. It's uh, just small enough to put onto a CD, but you can definitely burn it to a DVD. So uh, what you want to do is um, expand that ISO file out onto a CD or DVD, so that way it will become bootable. And when you do have an outage, you'll uh, boot off of that um, CD or DVD, and you will end up uh, being able to connect right to the backup uh, exec uh, storage device and restores the server exactly the way it was uh, before the server had crashed since the last backup. So that's creating the disaster recovery disk in backup.